Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> our first conversation this morning, as we mentioned prior to our commercial break, is to discuss sargassum research. Joining us via Zoom all the way from Barbados is Dr. Terrell Thompson. He is the Life Sciences Coordinator at Export Barbados. Good morning, Dr. Thompson. Good morning. Good morning, good morning everyone. All Let's right. begin by talking about um, your involvement, first of all, with Sargassum Research and this proposal to, to, to put together a dissertation, I believe, on this particular topic. Okay. Good morning again. Mm -hmm. um, it all started back in 2014, post my master's degree. Um, I did research in the disposal um, of plastics. And upon my return to Barbados, I noticed that we had a problem with uh, seaweed piling up on our beaches. And I wanted to, um, to find a solution to it, um, or at least one solution to this problem. Mm -hmm. um, so I, yeah, I just went about doing some, some research, contacted several universities, and um, New Zealand was keen on um, looking into opportunities for the waste treatment and disposal of this biomass. Mm -hmm. So that's where it all starts, started just seeking to address an issue of local and albeit regional importance. So describe for us the situation in Barbados where sargassum is concerned because in Belize we're still <clears throat> constantly battling this sargassum plague right. if I could use that. What has it been like for you guys over on the island and being able to, to mitigate the number, the, the actual amount of sargassum being washed ashore? Again, we are experiencing the same problem that you would have just described. Annually, we get about um, 10,000 tons a day of sargassum washing up on our beaches. Mm -hmm. um, it has reached the point where um, it is actually causing the shoreline to rise because you have an influx of sargassum, then mm -hmm. the sand covers that, and then you have another influx. And so the shoreline is beginning to rise. We've had um, several reports of mass fish kills. Um, mm -hmm. Even the sea turtles have been affected and their nesting has been affected. Um, currently, what is being done is that um, it's being removed from beaches and then transported to the landfill and disposed. And as you know, this is not, this is eco-unfriendly. Yeah. Um, um, that is the solution as it stands. Um, it is not a quick fix, as many people believe it is, mm -hmm. <laughs> to be quite honest, um, because uh, with everything in every country comes policy and legislation, and that is not in place at the moment, mm -hmm. although that is being um, worked upon at, at, as, as we speak. Yeah, I, so, um, I would gather that it has a direct impact on your tourism product. Um, Definitely. It's the same as Definitely. here in Belize where you have visitors who come to enjoy our beaches, who come to enjoy, you know, being on the islands and what have you. And if you have blankets of sargassum yeah, it's <laughs> everywhere, it, it's a turn off. Mm -hmm. Indeed, um, there have been several reports um, in the media, and this would be international media, mm -hmm. where persons have cancelled flights coming to Barbados. And indeed, across the region, Jamaica and so on, because of the order emitted when sargassum piles up on the beach and it starts to de decompose. Mm -hmm. Additionally, it is unpleasant to the eye. Mm -hmm. Let's just be honest. You see this brown thing piled up on the beaches, you know, it's very unpleasant. And then when persons try to even go into the water, you know, to enjoy our wonderful beaches, mm -hmm. you know, they're bathing in sargassum, sargassum. who likes yeah. to be, you know. But many persons don't even like to go into the water and have sea moss touch, touch them for, for less, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's a really big problem. Um, and I, I do admire several of the Caribbean islands for taking initiatives to seek to address this um, this issue. Okay. When um, I want to get into your into your research for a bit, uh, talking about sargasm and how you plan to to create some some solutions for for the problem. Um, there are certain things that uh, are a little bit tricky though when it comes to tracking sarcasm, especially when it comes to like seasonal variation, the chemical makeup of, of sarcasm and so forth. So how much of your research is diving into the sustainability for economic growth with this kind of resource? As you rightly said, um, it, is a, it is a challenge, mm -hmm. you know. Um, my research focused mainly on 
it's bio conversion when it is on island or when it has washed ashore. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't focus on monitoring. Um, it didn't focus on quant quantifying. Um, I did do some characterization. But again, um, as you said, it varies from season to season. Mm -hmm. um, so that as well has been a challenge. Um, but I more so focus on opportunity for bioadded resource recovery. Okay. How are you um, tracking that? Because uh, the chemical makeup of sarcasm is also in itself a, a little bit um, unstable. So how are you using sarcasm in itself to create that biomass? Again, um, so my analysis focused on sargassum from the year 2019. Mm -hmm. um, and moving forward for sustainability, every year you would have to analyze, as you said, the makeup changes, mm -hmm. and that will affect the process going forward, the pro or the application of um, my study going, going forward. So a continuous analysis would have to be done. Mm -hmm. Can you... Um Talk about that. I, I was reading it, and I and I had a lot of questions when it comes to the. Uh, I, I'm not a scientist, right? So <laughs> I just wanted to know a little bit more about how you track the the chemical makeup of sarcasm. But can it be pre-treated then, if you have that un instability of the chemical makeup? Um, pre-treatment isn't mm -hmm. going to improve the the chemical makeup. Okay, so essentially what pretreatment would do is it would break it down and make it more accessible for certain applications. Like my study in particular, when I did the pretreatment, mm -hmm. it was to increase the, the availability of sugars. As you would know, um, as I think you would know, going to the beach, if you were to take some sargassum in your hand and try to pull it apart, it is very fibrous yes. and as a yes. result it doesn't readily decompose mm -hmm. so pretreatment would actually accelerate the decomposition process that is what pretreatment would do okay. um okay. but in terms of the chemical composition I, again a lot of it stems from its origination and this would be off the coast of brazil um and that um in that growth area you have runoff coming from the amazon region and that is due to fertilizer use and so on. And as you know, the composition of fertilizers can change. Sometimes they may have more nitrogen or more phosphorus and so on. So it's going to be very difficult to characterize it. Mm. If we just look at, yeah, looking at it like that, it's going to be very difficult. Beyond its usage for landfill, mm -hmm. what other uses can sargassum be repurposed for? Okay, um, so my study in particular, I looked at it for biogas, mm -hmm. using it um, for biogas generation. And biogas would be for electricity, um, electricity production, mm -hmm. and a secondary component would be fertilizer. Okay. Right? Um, so that is one application of it. Um, from research, sargassum also contains a lot of bioactive compounds. So extraction of these bioactive compounds, you can actually use them in pharmaceuticals, you can use them in nutraceuticals. Um, then I've seen some places in Mexico where they actually are using sargassum to construct houses. Mm -hmm. So that's a new application as well. Mm -hmm. um, but those are the ones that definitely spring to mind. I see a lot of persons would be taking it and be using it um, for human consumption. I would not rec recommend at all yeah. human consumption because it is very high in heavy metals, things like mercury and arsenic, mm -hmm. which are very toxic to the human body. Yeah. In your research, you talked about um, you have to be careful of its hydrogen sulfide because, you know, the byproduct cause it will be corrosive to the machinery that you use when you're doing this kind of stuff. So how are you planning to solution that? Okay, so there are several um, ways to scrub or remove hydrogen sulfide from biogas. Mm -hmm. um, there are biological scrubbers, things like biochar and so on that can actually be utilized to um, reduce the composition of hydrogen sulfide um, to mitigate the corrosion of equipment. Okay. And my, my final uh, question when it came to the use, because you were talking about biogas, but then you did mention um, agricultural applications. Can you speak a little bit more about that? Okay, so sargassum um, post digestion or anaerobic digestion, as my study would have shown, um, there's potential for the use of the digested or the residue from the process as an agricultural um, stimulant, mm -hmm. right, as a fertilizer, biofertilizer. Um, the challenge, again, is because it is so high in heavy metals. Um, when I did my analysis, I realized that these heavy metals were also 
present are the high concentration. It was also present in the digestive. So what we would need to do is you would actually need to treat it prior to you to using it. A recent study was, was published and it actually shows that um, foods that are grown in sargassum, when they actually test the, the vegetables, sorry, that are grown in sargassum, when they test the vegetables, they also, they also revealed a very high concentration of heavy metals. Mm -hmm. So it was actually transferred from the soil oh. into the actual bed vegetable itself. Mm -hmm. okay. So again, some sort of re remediation would be necessary prior to using it as a fertilizer component. But there is potential for it to be utilized as a fertilizer component. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're studying, you're doing your, your PhD in New no, Zealand. Completed. You've completed it, okay, yes. from New Zealand, <laughs> forgive me. Um, what has what has their research what has their studies in that part of the world shown in respect of of learning more about sargassum and being able to deal with it again um in terms of that part of the world new zealand isn't affected by sargassum mm -hmm. so this was actually the first study done at the university of auckland um, and indeed to my knowledge um, in New Zealand on sargassum mm -hmm. um, but they are keen to assist I do know that they're actually um, funding several ventures mm -hmm. along with SICRI that's the Caribbean Climate Change Renewable Energy Efficiency Institute here um, in the region and they're actually looking to um, for solutions to sargassum the sargassum influx mm -hmm. so they're actually doing their part in terms of funding research okay. moving forward when you talked about the, the removal of sargassum, you talked about how costly it is, right? We talk about how costly it is here also in Belize. Um, what, is your, what are your suggestions then to reduce this kind of um, costly method? Because how else are we supposed to collect the sargassum and then create all of these uh, different resources with it? That's a very tricky question. <laughs> it's a very tricky question. Um, again, the challenge remains because Sargassum washes the shore of the beach onto the beaches. Um, I know in several countries, the removal of sand from the beaches is an illegal practice. Mm -hmm. um, when we use our tractors and so on, as is the case in Barbados, we collect a lot of sand and that goes with the tractor. So again, you have to have the man power, the physical labor is necessary. Um, I know in some places like in Guadeloupe and Martinique, they would have employed the, or they utilized the military mm -hmm. to help with the cleanup of sargassum and so on. Yeah. In terms of what can be done to reduce costs, that's a very tricky one. That's a yeah. very tricky one yeah. because again, most of the Caribbean islands, we are tourist destinations. Mm -hmm. They come to us for our beaches, for our sun mm -hmm. and our sand. So we have to have it prepared for them. So I don't think there is a there is a quick fix to reducing costs in that regard. What I'm trying to what I've been trying to figure out through your research is uh, the process of what happens between the sarcasm floating in the water when it reaches the, the beach and then how long does it take before it starts to decay because with my understanding is that when it decays it doesn't necessarily have the same amount of use anymore right so can you kind of give us a little bit more insight on that that is again that is quite controversial because mm. studies studies vary in that regard um i know that in my case i utilized i collected fresh sargassum and i dried it because okay. i had to then transport it to new zealand mm -hmm. but yeah. sub, sub, subsequent to my research i've seen the person stating that you can actually use the sargassum fresh from the ocean and i've also seen persons saying that it can be beach sargassum as well okay. um so again studies yeah why does it stink <laughs> that, <laughs> it's it's really one of the biggest concerns that we do have apart from it doesn't look nice mm -hmm. it also has that pungent smell right so yes so again um when it washes ashore it's a natural process of decomposition mm -hmm. um as you can understand, as you would imagine, sargassum is composed of about 85 to 90 percent water. Mm -hmm. So when it washes ashore, you actually have the water being trapped in the sargassum. Mm -hmm. And as you know, when water is collected in one area for too long, you actually start to get a lot of um, odor being emitted from it. Additionally, yeah. sar sargassum is composed or contains a lot of sulfur. Mm. And the decomposition of it releases hydrogen sulfide, it also releases ammonia mm -hmm. as well. 
Yeah. Um, and those two are definitely responsible for the stinky odor, as you would put it. <laughs> from the side, so I guess. Yeah. I, um, we're still, I, I've been looking at the different pros and cons, right? And of course, the, the cons of the sargasm definitely affects our tourism and our economy and so forth. And what we can do with it does vary and it does, you know, create certain solutions. Yeah. But w the one thing that I guess you or anybody hasn't really been able to figure out is how is it going to be sustainable for our economy. So just based on your research um, from Barbados, um, how would you suggest that we begin sample collection and preparation in Belize for solutions? Um, excuse me. So one um, thing you can actually do is you can harvest it from the, or collect it from the shoreline and you can actually sand dry it and store it in silos and utilize the dried sargassum. How do you do that? Research. How do you do that? Because just, just for our non-scientist um, viewers out there, <laughs> how would okay, you begin? So, yeah. So what you can actually do is, um, again, you spoke about using physical labor, mm -hmm. um, the manpower. So you can actually use rakes and so on. So this is to minimize the removal of sand from the beaches. I'm not sure of, of the policies in Belize with regards to the use of tractors and so on. Um, on the beaches, but you can actually collect it, you can harvest it and transport it to a facility and have it dried, sun dried. We want to capitalize on our solar, so we yeah. sun dry it and then you can actually store it in silos similar to how large farms yeah. would store their, their feed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can actually utilize the dried sargassum like that. I know here in Barbados in particular, and I'm a part of this project, so I'll speak to it, the University of the West Indies, um, we're actually looking into a project where we are using sargassum and another organic waste product to produce biomethane. And this biomethane is, is for use as an alternative transport fuel. Mm -hmm. As you know, with the current issues in Europe with regards to Russia and Ukraine mm -hmm. and so yeah. on, this yeah. is going to be very important. So I know several institutions or several academic institutions, they're actually doing their part to um, identify solutions. Um, I know some research is being done in Jamaica. There's actually one company here in Barbados that is utilizing sargassum seaweed to produce bioplastics, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? So there's several applications that, and I think um, a lot of it has to be led by the academic institutions. Hmm. It's interesting because there's a potential for this to be big business once once the research shows that it can be used for all of these other purposes that you've stated. Mm -hmm. um, it would be interesting to see how biofuel is made from it though in terms of we're looking at the high cost of fuel based on inflation and what have you presently mm -hmm. and this would be a welcome alternative if we'd be able to you know get some kind of process going where we can start putting it out as quickly as possible. Yes, yes. And, and again, I must stress that this is not going to be a quick fix. A lot of yes. persons think this is going to happen tomorrow. It is not. Yeah. It's going to take some time. It's going to take a couple of years. Um, one of the things that I'm hearing constantly on the streets is we've never had sargassum. And that is not true. Yeah. It has been here. Um, 20, um, 2001, 2002, but in very small quant quantities. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Again, the catalyst for the increase has been climate change in addition to increased agriculture runoff coming from the Amazon. Right. Yeah. So we need to get the rhetoric around it correct mm -hmm. and understand that it's going to be with us for some time and we need to actively work on identifying solutions for the problem. Right, so that was going to be my next question because sarcasm is produced naturally, right? So by us collecting it in mass quantities, are we disrupting the marine eco ecosystem in that kind of way? Uh, no, and again, well, yes and no. It depends on where it is collected. Mm -hmm. Now, so in the open water, sargassum is a, a hub or a habitat for many fish and mm -hmm. Marine life, they feed off of it and so on. Yeah. So if we collect it too far offshore, we will definitely be affecting the marine ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, onshore, not as much. Mm -hmm. the, um, and, and again, it would be necessary. Um, the region is also known as a nesting hub, mm -hmm. a sea turtle nesting hub. Yeah. And what we found is that several, several of the turtles come in or try to come ashore and they get trapped in the sargassum and they drown.
Mm -hmm. So, again, removing it on shore would be best or in the waters very close to the shoreline would be best. So we're coming down to the wire and I wanted, I had a couple more questions, but I guess the most crucial one is the, um, the results and the outcome of your research. How are you planning to implement those in Barbados and how can we use that for Belize? Okay, so in terms of in Barbados, um, currently we are looking into excuse me, a biogas plant. Mm -hmm. um, initially, we we're going to pilot it with organic waste, but we're not going to utilize sargassum at this time. Sargassum will be slowly incorporated. Based upon my research, what I found is that when you have more than 20% of sargassum in your feedstock going into the biogas plant, you actually have a reduced yield because Again, the sargassum contains several toxins that will um, impede the process. So to optimize potential, you need to have at least 20% um, or less of sargassum in your feedstock. So we're going to pilot it first with out the use of sargassum and then we'll look to slowly incorporate sargassum. One of the initiatives, again, that Export Barbados has been pushing or seeking to drive rather, is that we have um, been engaging the public in terms of identifying ideas for the use of this biomass because we do understand that we don't have all or we don't know it all we don't know what others are actually doing mm -hmm. so we're seeking to engage the public so i think one of the things that values can incorporate is that you can actually seek um to engage the populace see what they think how and look for different ways to get a different um avenues mm -hmm. to allow them to identify or to do stuff with it like several you know challenges and so on we have several challenges that we use there we did it with the ash clean cleanup and we got some amazing results versus um created several wonderful projects um and products when we had the large ash fall from um Sufre, yeah, yeah. Sufre and St. Vincent, and we're doing the same thing with the sargassum cv it's all about engagement and engaging the public do you think it's a good idea to use it as landfill? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. Again, that's that's that is chicken out. Um, a major chicken out. That's sad to say. I mean, um, we, I we, we're learning, well, right? <laughs> I I think as well. The challenges is that um, when when it goes into the landfill, again, it will decompose, mm -hmm. and it will just it takes a a good while before it decomposes, right? The challenge there in the landfill is that we are releasing greenhouse gases into the atmosphere yeah. and we're all seeking to mitigate climate change right yeah one yeah. avenue can be capturing landfill gas landfill gas again is similar to biogas so that can be captured and used as a biogas and again for electricity generation it can be upgraded for you know use in natural gas grid and so on so there are several opportunities there um, for the utilization of this biomass. It's just that we need to identify the one that works best and as you were well stating, one that is sustainable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, um, is there anything else you want to share with us as we wind down this particular segment? <laughs> um, I just want to um, encourage people to, you know, not to consume <laughs> sargassum <laughs> please don't please don't i feel like this is a conversation metals. you have often people con trying to consume sargassum <laughs> definitely definitely and i know a lot of persons would have um, be using it as a fertilizer mm -hmm. and while you do get an increase in the yield you also have to realize that the heavy metals like mercury and so on they they accumulate in the body mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and after a while they will be um detrimental to your health so yes i would um Try, try to sway persons away from using it um, or consuming it for food mm -hmm. and using it as a fertilizer. But um, there are opportunities out there for its utilization and we will find, find it. It just takes a little time. All right. Well, thank you, Thompson. Um, Dr. Thompson, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I guess we look forward to seeing how we can use different avenues to implement this kind of research and hopefully other people will jump on the opportunity to to get some funding for their own. So thank you so much for that insightful uh, conversation this morning. You're welcome. Do have a good day. You, you as well. All right. So we're going to get moving into our show for this morning. But before we get into our next break, introducing the look of the week from Phoenix Boutique.
Welcome to the Phoenix Boutique. Here's our look of the week. We have a monochromatic look. Mono meaning one and chromo meaning color. We have the pink Monstera clay earrings from Meraki Belize with a full Zara outfit. A ruffled chiffon blouse, a wide leg trousers, and the pink studded heels. The look is completed with a Michael Kors wristlet.